In the previous lecture, which was multiple transformations of continuous time signals, I explained one priority order, and that priority order is based on three basic operations. And the three basic operations are shifting, scaling, and reversal. In this course of signal and system, we are required to study six basic operations on signals. Three of them are shifting, scaling, and reversal, and the next three are differentiation, differentiation, integration, and convolution. We have already completed shifting, scaling, and reversal, and these three, differentiation, integration, and convolution, we will cover in the coming presentations. Now regarding shifting, scaling, and reversal, I explained multiple transformations in the last lecture, and we also obtained one priority order. Now regarding that priority order, I have received so many questions in the comment section of the previous lecture, so it is important to clear the doubt. The priority order is a simple tool which you can use to obtain the answer quickly, and the chances of you committing the mistake will reduce if you follow the priority order. So the priority order is not the only way to obtain the answers in which the signal is undergoing multiple transformations. You may or may not follow the priority order, it is up to you. But if you are not following the priority order, then your concept should be very clear regarding the multiple transformations. So in this lecture, I will explain all the basic stuffs required to perform the multiple transformations. And at the end of this lecture, I will explain one shortcut by following which you can easily obtain the answer. And for this purpose, I will take one example. In this example, the input signal is XT and the system you can see on your screen is producing the output YT which is equal, which is equal to X2T plus 3. So here, this system is producing X2T plus 3, the original signal was XT and when you compare XT with X2T plus 3, you will find the system is transforming the input signal multiple times because I can clearly see the involvement of time shifting, time shifting and also the involvement of scaling, time scaling. So we have two different operations and because of this, this is the case of multiple transformations. Now the input waveform is already given, the waveform of signal XT is already given. This is minus one, this is three, this axis is time axis and it is the waveform of signal XT. Now regarding this example, few people will comment why you are not taking complicated examples. If I have a complicated waveform, it will not make the example complicated or tough. The tough thing here is to understand the basic concept of multiple transformations. So why to waste our time by making some complicated waveform to understand the concepts in this course? There are good problems related to topics and we will cover them once we are done with the explanation. And also I will create separate playlist for ESC and gate questions. So don't worry about the questions, we will solve enough of them. Now let us begin with the explanation of this problem here. There are three different ways to solve this question. In the first method, we will first perform the time scaling, then we will perform the shifting. In the second method, we will first perform the time shifting and then we will perform the time scaling. And in the third method, which is actually the shortcut method, we will directly obtain the waveform. So let us begin with the method number one. In method number one, we will first perform the scaling and the next line, which I will say is the most important line of this lecture and you have to remember it to solve any kind of multiple transformations question. Whenever you perform any transformation, you have to look at the x-axis. For example, here the x-axis is the time axis so whatever transformations you are going to perform, you have to perform against this time axis. So this is one important line and it will be very significant when we will solve the question using the method number one. So I will quickly perform the time scaling. We are having signal XT and we are performing the time scaling and after this we are getting the signal X to T. And you already know how to perform the time scaling. 
the signal will be x to t and the x axis is t so we are simply multiplying 2 to t and in that way we will have a waveform with the same amplitude here let's say the amplitude is 1 so this waveform will also have the same amplitude there will be no change in the amplitude because we are performing the transformation on the time only here we will have minus 1 divided by 2 which will be minus 0 0.5 and when you divide 3 by 2 you will get 1.5 so what we have done here we have divided minus 1 by 2 and 3 by 2 and in that way we obtained minus 0 0.5 and 1.5 the amplitude will remain the same and if you compare the two signals you can clearly see the signal is compressed after performing the time scaling now in the next step we will perform the time shifting and the time shifting we will perform to the signal which we have obtained which is x2t so x2t after performing the time shifting the time shifting will become x2t plus 3 now in this step most of the students will commit mistake and if you don't want to have a wrong answer first make the x and y axis the y axis is for x 2t plus 3 and the x axis is for time t now to have the correct answer always look at the x axis the x axis is for time t the variable is time t so you have to perform the time shifting which is the operation in the second step against t but here if you see the signal x 2t plus 3 you are adding 3 to 2t this means you are performing the shifting which is the left shift by 3 against 2t but the x axis is t so the shifting should be against t so most of the students will simply shift the signal to the left this signal which is x2t to the left by 3 and in that way the answer will be wrong because the x axis is time t axis and you have to perform all the operations against t it should be relative to t only so we need to separate this time here and in that way we have x i will take two common this will give me t plus 1.5 now if you see here you will find the shifting is performed against time t not 2t and we are performing the left shift by 1.5 so let's quickly perform the left shift by 1.5 of the signal when you shift minus 0 0.5 to the left by 1.5 you will get minus 2 and when you shift 1.5 to the left by 1.5 you will get 0 so minus 2 0 and the amplitude will be 1 so this is the complete waveform of signal y t and this is the correct waveform if you perform this shifting without separating the time t you will get the wrong answer you will get the signal waveform in which the amplitude is 1 from minus 4 to 0 which is the wrong answer so let's move to the method number 3 in which we will perform the time shifting first and then we will perform the time scaling. The signal is xt and we will perform the time shifting first and after performing the time shifting we are getting the signal xt plus 3. Now again you will have confusion in this step. Here we are having 3 added to 2t. So why we are adding 3 to t? because when you draw the x and y axis you will have a signal waveform against time t so the shifting we are required to perform against the time t so we will add 3 to time t the original signal xt is having this plot and when you shift this signal by 3 to the left hand side you will have the waveform like this so this is the waveform of signal xt plus 3 in this step also we focused on the x-axis the variable was t so we performed the time shifting against t now in step number two we will perform the time scaling x t plus 3 time scaling the new signal will be x 2 t plus 3 in this step there is no problem we are simply multiplying 2 to the time so we can have 
a compressed waveform which is x 2t plus 3 the x-axis is t that's why there is no problem we are simply multiplying 2 to the x-axis in that way we will have a signal which is compressed when you divide minus 4 by 2 you will get minus 2 when you divide 0 by 2 you will get 0 amplitude will be 1 so this is the final waveform of signal yt and if you compare these two waveforms you will find they are same okay if you see the range minus 2 to 0 the amplitude is 1 here also minus 2 to 0 the amplitude is 1 so in this way there is no need to worry about the priority order if you understand how we have to take care about the variable in the x-axis you can easily perform the multiple transformations without following the priority order now let's talk about the shortcut method the method number three and in this method we will first draw the x and y axis the y axis is for the output signal y t and it is equal to x 2t plus 3 but we don't know how the waveform will look for this signal but we know the waveform of signal xt here x is dependent on t and the x-axis is for time t here x is dependent on 2t plus 3 and if we consider the x-axis as 2t plus 3 then the waveform of signal yt will be same as the waveform of signal xt so let's quickly draw the same waveform here but the system is producing the output yt which is the function of time t only it is not the function of 2t plus 3 so to obtain the actual waveform of output signal we need to change the x-axis we need to have t here in place of 2t plus 3 in these two answers also you can see the x-axis is for time t so how we can get t from 2t plus 3 it is very simple if we subtract 3 from this and divide it by 2 we will have t so let's do it we will subtract 3 from this and this will give us twice of t so we will subtract 3 from this the amplitude will remain same we will subtract 3 from minus 1 and 3 from 3 this will give us minus 4 and 0 so we have a new waveform in which the value of waveform will remain 1 from minus 4 to 0 and elsewhere it will remain 0 okay but uh, still the waveform is not of signal yt because in the x-axis we are having 2t so to get t we will divide this 2t by 2 we will divide it by 2 and this will give us t so we will divide minus 4 by 2 and we will divide this 0 this 0 which we have obtained here by 2 this will give us minus 2 and this will give us 0 so the new waveform will have the amplitude equal to 1 from minus 2 to 0 and elsewhere it will remain 0 and if you see the red waveform this red waveform it will be same as the waveforms we have obtained in the earlier two methods so this is the shortcut i hope this shortcut is clear to you we will solve one problem based on this shortcut and the two methods we have seen so if you have any doubt regarding the multiple transformations of continuous time signals you may ask in the comment section and in the solve problem number two we will deal with these three methods